This is Andy Tube. In this video, I'm going to do a comparison of the build and the features between these two sewing machines. This is the Singer Model 403A Special, and this is the Singer Model 503A. They were both built at Singer's newer factory in Anderson, South Carolina, USA. The 403A was built between 1958 and 1960, and there were 300,000 serial numbers allotted for that model number and records that I've been able to find. The 503A was built between 1960 and 1962, and there was also 300,000 serial numbers allotted for that uh, model. Now I have seen other writings where people have said 350,000 of these were manufactured and 400,000 of these were manufactured. But the, the documents that I saw with allotted serial numbers said 300,000 each for the 403A special and the 503. So I'm going to go with that. Both of the machines came with a button style foot controller. They did have slightly different cord sets which I can show you the receptors on the machine in a little bit. The machines were made to be mounted in a case of which you would normally have a metal tray attached on the bottom of the machines and I do not I don't have that tray but that tray then could connect with this carry case and the carry case is quite quite heavy uh, it's vinyl on the outside with uh, metal latches but the inside is wood. You gotta remember this was the 50s and 60s. And there's uh, kind of a swing down uh, tray up in here where you could put your attachment box. And then these little latches when you when you pulled up on the handle, retracted the latches. And those nylon, kind of like on a door, uh, would go into the tray. Now you can use this wooden cover on the machine without the metal base tray, but you have to be careful because then all the weight is just on those little pins right there. Sorry, let me let me get that out of the way. It's kind of heavy and bulky. Now the 403A on my scale weighs in about 22 pounds, just as it sits right there without any uh, tray base and without the foot controller. And the 503A weighs in at 23 pounds. Same thing, no, no metal tray, carry case tray, and no um, foot controller. So 22 pounds and 23 pounds. Both the machines can be hung by hinges in a cabinet. And uh, both of the machines so stitch, uh, straight stitch, zigzag, and ornamental stitching. They both use electric power and they have gear driven internal PA style motors, which I'll also show you down the line here. Now they both have this front built in light. But the, but the 
shade, this part that sticks out is called the shade, both of those come off. In the earlier model, there was a, you know, that more industrial look with the screw right here. And in the 503, the screws are more hidden. But they both have a light bulb called the lens with the on and off switch right there. So when you plugged in the foot controller to the machine and the wall, power was to the motor and you could control the, the light separately. They both use a needle size of 15 by 1. And they can both sew in single or two needle. The needle bar and the presser bar on both of these have a 9 degree tilt or slant. See, they don't come straight down like the older Singers. Now, a little bit earlier version, the 301, was the first to do that, that I know of. But that 9 degree slant is how it got its name, Slant Needle. And the presser bar and the needle bar slant at that angle. And what that did was move the sewing penetration view an inch and a quarter closer to the operator. So instead of this coming straight down here, it moved the whole thing an inch and a quarter over. Now some people talked about that that slant gave it more penetrating power, but Singer, Singer, the Singer repairman that I met disclaimed that. It's, they said it was strictly to give you a better view when you're feeding your material in for sewing. Now both of these machines have a hinged face plate. So there's no, no thumb screw that you have to take out. They just on a little hinge and a like a little clip that keep them closed. And they both have the threading diagram for the upper tension and the needle and for the bobbin that was built in on a metal liner on both of these machines. They both have a throat or needle plate positioning lever. Marked down, up, unlock. In the down position, it's for sewing. In the up position, it raises the throat plate or needle plate up just above the height of the feed dog so that you can do embroidery or darning. So, on the older machines, they made them so you could drop the feed dogs. Well, this, the mechanism, is a controller that raises up the needle plate above them. Now, in the final position of unlock, which would be all the way to your left, it raised the needle plate up high enough that it could be removed. And sliding it off the back there. And both the machines came with uh, an all purpose or zigzag foot, a general purpose, I guess would be better, um, foot and needle plate and a straight stitch uh, presser foot and needle plate. So when you wanted to change out the plate, all the way to the left, unlock, slide it off, slide the new one on, drop it back down. As simple as that. No screws. It's also easy to remove for cleaning. Now both the machines have uh, what's called a reversible clamp washer uh, stop motion mechanism. 
which is just simply that the stop motion screw or knob reverses to the left or towards the sewer to release the motion so the needle bar and feed dogs don't work that's for winding your bobbin and although the 500A oh by the way I should have mentioned that the Rocketeer the 500A and the 503 this is the 503A if I said that wrong before 503A both were Rocketeers it has a different styling of course and it also had a, a different handle instead of just the straight thin hand wheel it has this uh, thicker gold one with a bigger stop motion knob but the principle is the same holding one turning the stop motion screw towards you released the clamp so that so when the motor ran uh, it would only work the, the, the bobbin winder and not the needle bar or the feed uh, feed dogs now they both had an automatic uh, bobbin winder on the 403A it's on the front as many of the original Singer machines were going back well over a hundred years it's stored here inside where 66 and 99's are kind of sticking up here this kind of uh, mounts more flush but you simply turn it up you'd have your friction ring or rubber tire here and you would put it up against the hand wheel release the stop motion and wind and it had a bobbin winder tension disc and a bobbin winder spool pin right here at the base so it was very easy you didn't have to undo anything up here if you needed to wind a bobbin just release your stop motion uh, put the thread run it under the tension disc up to the bobbin put it up there wind your bobbin I've never seen one of these not working or broken ever now the automatic part <laughs> was uh, just a little screw and a a little triangle of metal that you could adjust closer to or farther from the bottom to adjust how much you wanted to fill and as the bobbin filled up the thread that you're winding would push against that triangle and it would slowly push that away so the friction ring didn't make contact and it would stop that was their idea of an automatic bobbin 1958 now on the 503 you can see the Rocketeer is a much different you know we're 60s now rocket man <laughs> it, the bobbin winder is hidden up here and the whole arm cover has a big old top that opens up and the bobbin winder is built right here and you put your spool of thread on one of these pop-up spools that pop up when you open the lid and you this is your bobbin winder tension right here so from here around the tension over to your bobbin snap it on here and push this little uh, lever lock lever over against the bobbin release your stop motion and wind your bobbin and when it filled it was to pop back out and most of the 500s and 503 A's that I've ever restored one or two of the springs for this mechanism were broken that's a very known exasperating problem for Rocketeer owners. The, uh, they both have a gear driven 
rotary hook. And the hook has to go around twice to form each stitch. And instead of a belt or mm, system like that, it actually has gears that drive the hook. And both of these are the same. And I think even the bobbin cases may be interchangeable. Um, and they have the, what's called the front top drop in bobbin. It takes a class 66 bobbin, like that. It's a very common bobbin. They also came in plastic later, and I usually use the plastic, but the front drop in bobbin. Whoop, the slippery front drop in bobbin. Just like that. No reaching around the side, taking out the bobbin case, inserting the bobbin, and so forth. Both of the machines have a um, zigzag width. Uh, one is straight stitch, and then up to the width of five. And that maximum width is about three sixteenths of an inch. And you can see the mechanisms on both the machines are very similar. And most of the controls inside for those mechanisms are very similar. I'll be showing you a little bit closer. It has, they both have a graduated stitch length indicator plate. And both of them have knobs that can be turned to lock the stitch in if you wanted a 12 stitch per inch and you move it there and lock that in and then it couldn't go uh, below the 12 and they both use a up reverse that's your reverse lever also so if you wanted to lock it in at 12 and you were sewing your seam and you could flip up to reverse and just flip right back down and it would stop where you locked it in you don't not required to lock it in but that's what that was for. So the plates are a little different and the knobs, this one's kind of gold tone and this one is silver tone, but the same same kind of feature. You can lock in the stitch and up for reverse. And they're graduated or numerated on there. They both had a numerically graduated needle thread tensioner that can handle one or two threads. So remember I said one or two needle sewing, well you'd need two needle threads and these tensioners um, have a separator disc. So there's three tension discs inside here so you can handle two threads. And the same on the on the 403A. Now the numbered meaning that you can you know, set your tension at four and know that that's good. Maybe when you sew denim on your machine, you need a tension of five. Maybe when you do a wide zigzag, your machine works best at three or two. So it's numerated so you can go right to it. And they both have a standard lift, presser bar lift lever on the back that raises the presser bar foot and also at that time releases tension on the on the uh, thread tensioner. Both of these machines have a needle bar stroke meaning how how high that needle bar goes up and down of about one and nine sixteenths it inch one and nine sixteenths inch and they both have a presser bar hmm, lift they call it lift of 0.295 inches so from the top of the needle plate to the bottom of the presser foot 0.295 inches now the machines were made out of aluminum and they're cast aluminum and it's an aluminum 
uh, arm, riser, and bed. All of it's aluminum. And both the beds are the same size. Six, 16 inches, 16 and a half inches long. So these were a little bit longer than some of the uh, 14 and 14 and a half inch blacks machines. 16 and a half inches long by 7 inches wide or deep. And both of them, what we'll call the working space from the right of the needle, from from the edge of the needle um, to the vertical base. This is called the working space. And so this working space on both machines from the needle to the upright is seven and three sixteenth in inches. Seven and three sixteenth inches. Okay. The 403A has a lift cover for access to special design cams. Now the machine would have been sent from the factory with the zero cam, which is zigzag. And they just push and pull in and out. And these are called the top hat cams. And they, and they do. These were called the three hole, the big center hole, the uh, round, um, I don't know what that shape is, but it goes around a, a bar up here that sticks up, and then it's got the little hole. Later into the 700 series, these cams have four holes, and they're a little bit different height. And, and you don't really exchange them between the series of machines. So this is a three hole top hat cam. And, and it came with the zigzag and both of the machines came with, I think this came with eight extra cams with different patterns. You know, walls of Troy, boxes, icicles, scallops, things like that. And I think the 503 came with four, or it may have come with eight also. But then there was um, cams you could buy individually, or you could buy in sets of 12. And I think there's a total of 22 cams. So that's where the decorative stitch came in. If you wanted to sew a pattern, you put this in straight stitch, pull it out, put in the pattern cam you want, lock it in set your setting for that pattern and stitch length and away you go and the same was for this 503A and when I bought this machine the cam was missing the zero cam and uh, they didn't really sell those individually like the others so people who have one and they usually want 15 to 20 bucks for it. <laughs> but the cams were interchangeable on these two series. The, uh, the 500 and the 400s. 401, 403, 500, 503 can use the same pattern cams or designer stitch cams as special cams. I'm saying that, but it doesn't want to fit. But I just got through reading that. Oh, there. This machine needs a lot more work than this one. <laughs> okay, anyway, they, they both come with different, uh, about eight different pan, uh, cams in the attachment set from the factory. And that's how you put them in and out. Now, the 503A... And this is the first time of all the machines, uh, 500 or 503, that it had the third spool pin. There's a little storage spot up here where you put it, you put it long pin down and it stores. And that's to go up here. If you're not doing all of this, you can just put your third spool pin up there and put your spool of thread and 
and thread the machine and sew. But it has to be removable. Um, I think they did it for looks and I think there was a problem in some of the cabinets. It wouldn't hang down in the cabinet too good. So there's a little storage. And like I said, this, this is the first one I ever bought that had, still had that. Um, so I was kind of kind of surprised at that, but I'm happy to see it. Also, in the uh, flip-up uh, cover for the cam access on the 403, it's just a blank cover, but where this whole arm cover flips up on the 500 and this 503, there's charts in here talking about the different cams. It has the cam number and what the patterns are. And sometimes you have to put it in left needle position only to do the pattern. Um, telling you the stitches, how to put in the cam. And it should always be at one when you put the cam in. And they both have this left, center, right. Left, center, right. Left, center, right. Needle positioning mechanism. And to change it, you you push the button in towards the machine and you take it down to move the needle to the right or and then let it release out and you up to the um, top for for the needle position uh, left and the center position is in the middle which makes sense and they both they have a little bit style, different style of faceplate and button, but still the same principle. Okay. And the only other difference with the 500, 503 over the 401 and the 403, besides this Rocketeer styling, the hand wheel, you know, this pop-up lid with the hidden bobbin winder, um, was this little mechanism right here. And I think I'll can I zoom in a little bit there on that. Yeah. I think I'll do some close-up views of these two. But there's a little finger light that comes out when you uh, sew. And there it is coming out right now. And what's a, what it's called was the uh, thread control or automatic thread control. And when you threaded the machine, you went across that finger and down into the tension unit. And when the machine was running, that finger would come out and pull some slack from the spool. And then the finger goes back into the machine. And their, their marketing deal was... Uh, you know, it pulls off the exact amount of thread you need for your next stitch. And uh, like it was some big deal. But I, I don't think it was worth it. Most sewers that I know just bypass it, just run the, th the thread right by it and don't use it. I don't know if it was something to do with their spool system and that they had to get a little extra pull off of the spool, but the 500 and 503A were the only models they ever used that on from, um, you know, 1960, 61, and 2, and then they dropped it. They kept the slant needle and, and stuff like that, but they dropped this uh, thread control it was called and that little lever just attaches um, into the mechanism for the take up lever so I don't know to me uh, and now I'm going to get into my personal opinion uh, I like the 403A much better than the 503A I'm, I'm, I'm a lot more about function over form the Rocketeer is a very stylish machine. 
but um, to me, it, they didn't change much of the function um, between the four, 401 and 403 and the 500 and 503. They changed the styling of the arm and this lift up base, put a different handle on it, uh, hid the screws instead of having this screw here, you know, they, they concealed them a little bit. But so if I was going to buy one, I would buy the 403. Uh, it's just going to last longer. There's less things to uh, go wrong with it. It's, it's uh, easier to maintain. It doesn't have this wasted thread control thing. Uh, doesn't have bob and winder springs and pop up thread springs that can break. Um, so that's just a, a, a matter of taste as somebody who's worked on them for years. But there's absolutely nothing wrong with this. The last time I did one, I did have a little trouble finding one of the two springs up here. And I finally found a seller on eBay. And uh, if, if I was to do it again, I think the spring was like three bucks. So if I was to do it again, I'd probably buy three or four of them. If I owned one of these machines, I'd buy at least one spare. <laughs> so, because <laughs> I just figure it's, it's going to go on you. It's going to conk out. Now, I know that the video is getting pretty long here. And, uh, you know, those, those are the main things about both machines. They're both great machines. They both have a direct drive motor um, and almost all steel gears. The only non-steel gear is the Textolite gear that's on the hand wheel. And they both have that. And that I've never seen wear out. So they're very strong. They're very powerful. You know, 0.7 amp motor that can peak at almost one amp. Um, they run 12 to 1500 RPM, the motors. Uh, easy to change light bulbs. You take the cover off, change the bulb, put the cover back on. Easy access, easy to maintain. Um, take your pick. Take your pick for styling. If you uh, clean it up and adjust it right, and if you just do standard maintenance on it, it will last another lifetime or two. These machines, uh, this one needs more work than this, but both of them are in great shape and you figure that they're, this is 2017, so the latest, you know, this is like 57 years old, 55, 54 years old, Whew. And they're and they're doing good. And they, their beautiful potential, I wouldn't have paid for them. So if you want to continue on, um, now I'm going to do a little bit closer work with each, each machine just for a few minutes to show you the particulars up close because I know this is kind of an angle shot and it's got to be pretty boring. I'm getting tired of hearing me. <laughs> so <laughs> let, me, let me set up for some closer shots. But if... Uh, if you don't care about the closer views and the little idiosyncrasies, we're, we're done with the comparison between the two. If you want to know a little bit more, hang on here and I'll be right back. And either way, thanks, thanks for watching. So as I continue on uh, with the comparison now, this is going to spotlight the 403A Special. And I just wanted to give you a, a closer look at some of the build and features here with this uh, swing open nose plate or front end plate the, as I said it has the uh, metal and it's painted with the upper thread path and the bobbin uh, thread how to uh, run that thread and we'll notice that on the um, Matter of fact, let me get my block and I'll raise this up a little bit. Okay, this may give you a little bit a better view here. Um, the 403A has a graduated pressure bar pressure knob. 
that you can turn in any increment that you want and it has a driving pin that puts pressure on the spring inside that tells you how much pressure is on the presser bar. So if you're sewing heavier or slippery fabrics, you turn it to the right to whatever you want. Very fine increments, just whatever you want. If you're sewing light, delicate, silk, or fabrics like that, you turn it to the left. And if, you, if you're going to, uh, you know, embroider, and you, and you want really free moving, but you want the uh, presser foot there just to keep the fabric from puckering, you can put it very, very light. It has a, a swing bar mechanism for your zigzag. Um, it has the uh, very standard presser bar lifter lever that not only lifts up the presser bar but releases the tension on the tension disc so you can uh, thread the tension unit. Okay, the very standard take up lever. Just the normal that you've seen on probably every sewing machine that you ever, you know, <laughs> ever worked on. Um, looking up here at the top, you have your arm cover thread guide up here. You have one spool pin, and this one is missing, but there's another spool pin hole right over over here. Let me back on here. Another spool pin hole right here. So if you're going to do two needle sewing, and this uh, lift up cover, as I stated before, gives you access to the top of the cam stack, and with your needle width in S for straight stitch releases it and you can pull out your top hat cam and you can see the top of the cam stack here and you can put in a different one I think there's 20 or 22 different ones uh, for the 403A and they just pop in and out like that but you do need to have your width lever in straight stitch because that releases a little mechanism in here and it came, came from the factory with this zero disc or zigzag. And if you have uh, your spool of thread over here, you, you can sew with this open if you want, but you usually close it. And here on the front controls, uh, you do have your stitch width from S for straight to width 2, 3, 4, 5, as I said before. You just push down the lever a little bit and slide it left or right. And it is incremental. It's kind of metered at two, two and a half, three, three and a half. But you can nudge it to any width you're doing for your project. You know, new electronic machines, I don't know if you can do that. And this lever and button here uh, is for left center right needle left center right so you push in to release the lock and then if you bring it up to the top that swings the needle bar to the left position if you swing it all the way to the bottom that's the right position if I back out here and zoom down there maybe we'll be able to see that needle bar swinging left and right Not going far enough right, but it needs to be cleaned and adjusted. Um, this is the uh, stitch length or feed control. The way you control your stitch length is by how much the feed dogs move to pull in fabric. And you can go from six inch stitches per inch all the way at the bottom up into the fine area which is over 20 and then 
this bracket is made so that you can turn this in and you can dial in for satin stitching little tiny increments and just keep turning that the tiniest amount to, to bring your stitches close together for satin stitch. Um, you can lock in on a stitch as I said before like stitch length 10 and the reverse for any stitch in straight stitch or zigzag or pattern is up. Reverse is up and then back down and that's why you can turn that in and lock it. They called it lock it like on a 10 so if you reverse you just hit it down you don't have to try and find 10 you'll end up exactly where you were uh, sewing in forward the, the length. Your bobbin winder mechanism up a little closer here uh, just lays back in here flat and then uh, don't forget there would be a rubber tire or friction ring here that would ride right along this point. Just see that little gap right there in the body where the, the side of the hand wheel is exposed? That's for the friction ring to go up against so it would have the movement to wind the bottom. This is your uh, throat plate positioning. To the right, down. The plate is down. Straight up. Lifts the the needle plate or throat plate up above the feed dogs to the left brings it up higher so you can remove the uh, needle plate that's as much as I can zoom but you see that's all the way up that's partially up for darning and that's down for sewing very nice easy compared to the older even the 301 you had to go underneath the side over here and turn a knob forever to lower the feed dogs this is just right there in front of you easy to do the bobbin winding tension disc system and bracket the bobbin winding uh, spool pin then you put your spool of thread here go underneath and around the bracket go up onto your class 66 bobbin and and just press the bobbin on there where's my bobbin oh, sorry I don't know what I did with my bobbin but it just pops on the side right there goes up to get friction run it wind your bobbin pull it off stow it away <coughs> the Classic flat Singer hand wheel right to here with the nice big chrome screw that loosens the stop motion clamp so that you run the motor, you turn the hand wheel <coughs> to wind the bobbin, and then you hold the hand wheel, turn the screw back to the right. That's why it's called reversible clamp. And this is the um, receptor for the plug. As I said in the main video, the 403A and the 503 have the same controller, but they have a little bit different. This has a two-prong uh, Bakelite housing with the brass pins to, to accept the cord up there. I'll show you the 503 later. I never showed you the back of the machines. Um, this is the back of the 403 with the Singer uh, painting, not really a decal, but more of a painting. And the hinges for the little cover that covers the cam stack and the discs, fashion discs or special discs from back. So those are the hinges for the flip up cover that exposes the top half top half cam that you can change out up there at the top of the cam stack and let's keep this back out here make a little room and I'm going to take off this top cover and show you what things look like under the top of the 403A 
and there's just the screw up towards the front and the screw up towards the back nice heavy duty steel screws on these beautiful vintage is that is that enough yay that's enough let me just show you the underside of this this is the spring clip to keep the nose cover closed and these are the little hinge springs I'll show you the mechanism in the back so let me just put that to the side and now you're going to be looking from the back to the front on this but this is the uh, swing connector that when you're doing a zigzag that this is what swings rocks back and forth to make your uh, uh, needle swing back and forth um, you take that off so you can see more of that cam stack there and over here is the very top of the shaft of the motor is that showing up at all there let's see <clears throat> yeah that's the top uh, the worm gear that's on the end of the shaft of the motor and back at the end of the hand wheel inside is that textile like gear so when that motor turns it's direct gear drive to that textile like gear in the hand wheel which is bolted on the main horizontal arm shaft starts everything moving mm -hmm. you see nice heavy heavy shafts up here, main arm shaft, the swing bar that, uh, let's see if I can get this swing bar that makes the, is it showing up here, the top of the needle bar, swinging back and forth, that's what all those mechanisms are, come around to the front there. Put this down. Put that cam back in so I don't lose it because they're 15 or 20 bucks just for one of those. Okay. Let's see if I can lay this on the back side and I'll take off the drip pan, also called the oil pan, but it's a drip pan so when oil would drip it's got just a, th a big thumb nut and a, the original thick brown felt pad to protect it um, this is the 403a again and it's a beige plate I have seen them black I have not looked under here let's see what's under here mm-hmm Yep, lots of lint and ooh, that's not good to have in there with all the gears. It looks like it got hit by something. Oh, it's a little, a little crooked there. <laughs> yep. So get that out of the way. Yeah, let's put this up on the block so that you can get a better angle on it there. Okay, so here is the uh, gears that run the hook. There's a gear on this uh, horizontal uh, shaft right there that mates at 90 degrees with the gear uh, that's mounted on that little circle there is the bottom of the hook shaft. And that's what turns the hook. So instead of a belt and pulley system, you have steel gear to steel gear and again if you keep those clean and greased they will never wear out then you have the same thing at the other end where this vertical shaft comes down from the 
arm shaft and you've got a 90 degree gear system two steel gears at this end and that's what turns this shaft. So no again no belts, no pulleys, anything like that. It's just all steel gear except for the Textilite gear on the hand wheel. Here's the bottom of the PA style motor that's that stands up. This is the bottom. I showed you the top with the worm gear up by the hand wheel. And these are a rocker and lift uh, arms for the feed dog system. And this is that throat plate positioning bracket that comes over here and operates some lift pins. So let me find that again. You can see how that goes underneath. And you can see all the lint and thread and stuff that gets in these. Uh, yeah, I've got some thread wrapped around the gears there. So, um, okay. So, that's the bottom of the 403A. Now, I'll show you the 503A here, but it's virtually going to be uh, just like this. That's why I said they didn't change much between the 403A and the 503A. It was more cosmetic. The Rocketeer styling and the weird automatic thread puller thing and the flip-up lid and fancier hand wheel. That's about the only difference of the two. So, there wasn't any big mechanical changes uh, other than the automatic thread thing that they, they only used for the 500 a 503 and then they dropped it. So let me get that out of the way and let's see if I can get this 503A over here for you. Ta -da. Okay. So, do the same thing. We'll start around here on the nose plate. Opens up. Inside here is a piece of metal. And it's painted with guides on how to run the needle thread and the bobbin thread. How to thread the bobbin holder or bobbin case. But now you're going to see a mechanical difference here. Because of this whole setup here, they went to a pressure dial for pressure bar pressure pressure control. You see that? And it's it's just a dial, and you can go from uh, zero, which would be you know like your darning and embroidery and stuff, up to nine. But it's set increments. One, two, three, four, like that. Uh, you, you can't go four and a third, or five and a quarter, or three and three eighths, <laughs> or, or anything like that. It's just a set increment. So for me, that's, that's like, doesn't give the, the crafter as much options with the 403A where it was the just the knob up here that you could twist and turn and control little tiny increments. Um, this is, you know, it's just set increments. Boom, boom, boom. So, um, for me, I like the old. And plus, there's a lot more pieces here. To, I, I guess I like the system on the 403A uh, better. It was simpler. Just a, a knob up here with a pin and a spring. And this has a kind of a bent pin and a control knob and a bracket and some other pieces up here that um, you know to get all this to work that to me are just more things to maintain or more chances to break apart. Um, it's a beautiful machine but I like the simplicity of the 403A. Now it still has a swing uh, you know swing bar mechanism here. Um, still has a mm, same lift up lever 
it still has the upper thread tension unit but like I said they took the, the two pieces of the number plate and the little chrome knurled knob and they made it into one metal knob and painted it and but otherwise it functions entirely the same oh maybe I can show you this yeah here's the take up lever right let me see if I can show you that little get my pointer here get this little automatic thread arm thing and this is the uh, hinge screw that connects to the hinge the uh, needle bar connecting connector and um, what 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 they did with that was on the back side of it they put this little chrome finger that goes around see it coming up there maybe and then it pops out the slot above the thread right there and it's supposed to pull a piece of thread down and then let it go pulls off a little loop of thread so that's an extra part and stuff that they did um, the controls up front are the same straight push the lever down and to the right with two three four five same stitch length same stitch width left center right needle uh, mechanisms um, you know the back plate and the knob is a little different um, same removable uh, light shade it's just the screws are kind of underneath and hidden here instead of the one on the front of the uh, 403 a little more of that rocketeer uh, styling you know off to the future right <laughs> uh, the same throat plate positioning bracket a little bit smaller the words and pictures now uh, this one's pretty stiff needs a good cleaning but the same principle as the 403A take you around the back here you got your instead of that big chrome screw here you've got a metal my goodness it's still metal um, stop motion screw that loosens the same way as the chrome does You've got your bigger kind of antique gold or Singer gold for the hand wheel itself, a whole different style. And this gold paint matches the gold on the lettering and the uh, instrument panel and the back end of the tension unit. Coming around the back, you'll see the hinge. Okay. Now they're wider apart than the 403A because this lifts the whole, this whole lid. The whole arm cover almost opens up. Oops. Get back down here. Oh, my battery's getting low. The whole arm cover opens up like that. So let's get around here. Up on top is the same arm. Uh, thread guide, arm cover thread guide. See if I got enough battery to open this up. Of course, I need my screwdriver to do that. Okay, so there's still two screws, but they're under the cover. This time they don't go through the cover. There's one up in the front and one towards the back but they're not centered on the machine like the most other Singer machines they're a little bit off center towards the front here because of all the pop-up spool pins and stuff the other one is back here behind the hand wheel and then you want to be careful 
lifting it by this, the hinges can come out, so be sure you support the actual arm cover. Don't just don't just lift it by this flip up door. And you can see there's more parts under here. Here's the hinges. And you got your little flip up and uh, spool pins and little springs that can break someday. And this is the storage, spool pin storage for the third pin sticking down. Get that out of here. But now when, when we come up here and I show you what's inside there, it's going to look a heck of a lot like the um, 403. Get this a little closer even. Yeah. So it still has your swing bar going up front to make the swing mechanism. It still has some very good heavy duty, you know, arm shafts. It still has a hmm, camp stack, but the camp stack's set a little farther into the machine now. But it's the same principle with the, the top hat cams that snap right on here. And the, all the controls for stitch width and needle positioning, you know, and the, the uh, stitch length lever. Let's get over here and look at this bobbin winder system that I'm not too thrilled with. Here you see the friction ring. It's got a couple of brackets on there. And at the end of the motor shaft on this model, they threaded it to give a little traction to that um, friction ring or rubber tire. And uh, when you put your bobbin on there, you got to push this whole mechanism over and it pushes it against there and that finally turns it and then as the thread fills up it eventually pushes that away and releases the spring that lets the other spring pull the bobbin about a millimeter away from the motor. It's real tight fit. And there's a spring in here that usually breaks and there's one over here that sometimes breaks. So. Uh, just just more more parts more things to go wrong but it is hidden it is concealed and it, and it works good you know believe me a lot of people just manually wind it because this spring is broken and they sometimes it falls down in there people can't even see it or find it oh and I still have some batteries so maybe I'll show you the underneath here so you'll see that the way that the upper mechanisms are very similar. You can see that the bottom shafts and uh, rods and stuff are very similar also. I wouldn't doubt that the drip pans are interchangeable. That wouldn't surprise me a bit. Okay, let's get that out of the way. If I can get this up. Hmm. Okay, okay. So, looky here. Here's the same two steel gears and the same type of shaft coming from the same two mated steel gears here that run the hook. And here is the throat plate positioning bracket that comes and sets the retaining pins and moves them up and down. They're stuck. The pins are stuck down. This was, I can see some, somebody used something other than sewing machine grease and sewing machine oil on here. This is going to have a little more work. But. It's the same, the same, you know, lever and bracket, the same rods that do the feed dog lift and the feed dog rock, 
the same um, style PA style of motor that's mounted vertically with that top worm gear on the end of the motor turning the textile light gear on the back of the hand wheel it gives the whole machine power so I don't I don't think I looked under the I don't think I looked so much under the uh, slide plate on the 403 I forgot that but I can show you that but they're both very similar the same there's a metal bobbin holder or bobbin case that rides on the race of the hook right there and it's got the front drop in bobbin and top drop in front drop in it's got a little bobbin positioning spring here that keeps it you see then the hook going around and that bobbin case just rides on the race of the hook on the kind of the top edge of the hook there mm -hmm. so they're both the same and the bobbin just you know, lifts out like that class 66 mm -hmm. your bobbin case or bobbin holder so I guess for the mechanical changes, really the body style with the Rocketeer slant changed. Um, the uh, pressure controller of the pressure bar changed. They added this little automatic thread puller and they made the, a lot bigger flip open cover with concealed, um, you know, with the concealed spool pins and and uh, the bobbin winder system is is over here uh, under the cover and just poking up kind of through the through the top of the cover there. So. Same but different. Both wonderful, heavy-duty, strong, good running machines. Um, this is needs definitely to be cleaned and degreased and some adjustments made. But the nice thing is, is all these vintage machines, you can do that on these vintage machines. And quite easily. I've got a lot of tutorials on my website about how to do that and if I can do it uh, there's no reason you cannot do it so that is the end of I think the longest video I've ever done uh, if you stayed to see this part boy you're a really trooper I hope you watched it like 10 minutes a night for a week or something <laughs> um, I have a lot of questions from people about the the 400 and 500 models and I happen to have these two that I just acquired so that's why I thought I'd do the comparison I hope it was interesting for you and I hope you come back and see me and comment and subscribe and share and all those kind of things if you like thanks for watching